I think it had something to do with the light. Well, now the screen is not on, so one out of two isn't bad. All right, so anyway, so here I am, so let's give it a good college try, right? So about shaping the digital revolution. And saying college try, my college was St. Xavier's College, Kolkata, before it became co-ed. Ah, there we go. All right. So when we talk about the word revolution, um, the associated word is revolt. And the associated adverb or adjective is revolting, right? Now, revolting can mean one of two things. It can mean a vigorous, violent protest, or it can mean something disgusting and unpleasant, like revolting odor from the rubbish dump. Um, I don't know how many of you here remember a made-in-England made soap called Imperial Leather. Uh, oh, there you are. Okay, fair enough. Somebody does. Um, probably still exists. Well, years ago, there was a TV ad in the UK which was set in the Russian Revolution. Um, the scene is Tsar Nicholas lying in his marble and gold bathtub, covered with suds, presumably from in imperial leather, and a courtier, disheveled, wild-haired, wild-eyed, panic-stricken, rushes in and says, Sire, Sire, the peasants are revolting, the peasants are revolting. Nicholas looks up at him with distaste on his face, twitching his nose and says, what makes you think you smell any better? Presumably, if you use uh, imperial leather, you'll smell much nicer. So, I'm not saying that the digital re revolution is revolting, but there are some aspects of it that causes worry. Uh, Manish Tiwari referred to a couple of those points. So, let's take a look at the good and the bad and the ugly. So, what's good? Well, this is good. Technology will continue to progress exponentially. The other day, I was checking something out, and I read that the Xbox today has more processing power than the most powerful military supercomputer that the U.S. Defense Forces had in the year 2000. That's the progress in 15 years. The economic wealth will increase significantly. That's the good news. I'll tell you the bad news in a minute. And we've become a borderless world. And there's information access and there's social media. All good stuff. What's bad? The bad is organization and people skills will fall, fall further and further behind. That's a reality. The bad news is majority of people are unlikely to benefit from this growth of the economic pie. If you look at the data, we always talk about the creamy layer, the 1%. Well, there's a 1% of that 1%, the 0, 1%. And guess what? They are getting higher share at a faster rate of global wealth. Borderless world, inter internet, etc. Any of us who are parents in this room know that what we've created is some kind of a culture kitchen. We are neither one thing or the other. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't know, but that's a reality. And just like there's social media, there's also unsocial media. And there's been plenty of examples that we all know. And what's the ugly? The ugly is that Professor Eric Bijofson of MIT calls this the second machine age, the first machine age being the Industrial Revolution and the uh, steam engine, etc. The difference between the second machine age and the first machine age is, according to him, that whereas, whereas the first machine age, machines helped human beings, in the second machine age, there is every potential that machines will replace human beings. The gap between the high-skilled people and the low-skilled or medium-skilled people will widen. Uh, Manish Tiwari was talking about a global visa for high-skilled people. Yep, absolutely workable. 
universal labor, absolutely. If you read the newspapers, if you see the kind of offers that uh, companies are making to uh, graduates in the IITs and the IIMs, that, that's the beginning of global skill pool. But at the same time, if you look at the data between capital and labor as a mix in the whole industrial ecosystem and scenario, you will find capital is going like this, the content, the mix of capital, labor is going like, down like that. And that is, the reason for that is very simple. Higher levels of automation, displacement of labor. In fact, because of the higher levels of automation, according to Boston Consulting Group, uh, they did a sample study with, I don't know, 200 uh, U.S. companies mid-tier. 71% of those companies are bringing manufacturing back to the U.S. because it's now competitive. As far as the borderless world is concerned, there is also something called the dark net. And if there are any hackers in the room, they'll know exactly what the dark net is, and they'll exactly know who lurk in the dark net. And information access, well, information is now being used as a weapon. Misinformation, rather, or disinformation is being used as a weapon of radicalization, of terrorism. So that means that's the anti-social media. I actually originally wrote sociopathic media, but then I thought, oh, maybe somebody may, might take offense. Okay. Let's go to something totally strange. This will help. HCL, an IT company competing with giants like IBM, wanted to demonstrate its key value, transparency, to a global IT talent pool. The idea? Hold the world's first ever public job interview on Twitter. Why Twitter? With 39% of all job seekers using Twitter and 6.7 million people planning to change their jobs, it looked like the medium was just waiting to showcase HCL's belief in transparency. We invited applicants from around the world by creating an online campaign. And you'll organize it. With 88,000 applicants from 60 countries responding to our call, the interview was well underway. Round the clock for 21 days, a team of HCL experts tweeted questions and candidates tweeted back answers which reflected their fundamental skill set, general awareness, quick thinking, aptitude for the job, and their attitude towards life. But unlike the traditional interview, this journey was totally fun and non-stressful. Finally, five of the best candidates were shortlisted. And after another rigorous round, the winner was chosen. Unlike other interviews, you need not be, uh, you know, tense that your boss will come to know about whether you are participating in a recruitment process or not. So it was both fun and exciting for uh, me. But the other job applicants still chose to be our fans. Because by giving the old job interview a creative new twist, we got the millennial workforce to apply, the world to take notice, the press to talk, HCL stock price to peak, and got a movement about transparency, some clear results. HCL became the most followed IT service company in the world, all at the cost of hiring a single employee. Okay. <clears throat> Um, what is uh, uh, sort of the context of that was that we were looking for five positions. Um, as the video showed, we got 88,000 applications. The total cost, the total cost was six and a half lakhs, right? 4.8 lakhs was the cost of onboarding the five guys. So the campaign actually cost about 1.5, 1.6 lakhs. This is a game changer. Global recruitment. 
Okay, so let's back up a little bit. Let's think about uh, what is happening and why is it happening, all right? In a class, in a certain university, in a certain year, a certain professor teaching an MTech class asked the class to define certain uniquely human capabilities that cannot be replicated by a machine, all right? After much, much thinking, the class came up with these. Okay? Let's now fast forward to today. What are the machine intelligence capabilities? The university was MIT, and the year was 2004. Ten years. When they imagined... MIT master's students with a world-renowned professor, they came up with these three factors or these three unique capabilities which they believe could not be replicated in the foreseeable future. So now, if you take uh, Siri, if you take Cortana, if you take Nuance, intelligent voice recognition and language recognition in multiple languages. If you take Lionsbridge or Skype, translation. Skype today can, tr can translate. You can talk in English and at the other end Skype can translate what you're saying into multiple languages. There are companies like uh, Native Science and uh, Automated Insights who generate thousands of news articles for Associated Press. Native Science actually writes stories which is actually on Amazon. You wouldn't know. So, how is the digital in, uh, revolution impacting the common man? Well, some of it, most of it, we all know, right? I mean, in India, Aadhaar has the potential of being a total game changer. When you think about what the Aadhaar ecosystem can impact, from banking to healthcare to education to retail to a whole variety of things, and it's giving identity to every single individual, which is totally secure, totally unique. It's an amazing achievement. Um, the rest you all know. But what the key thing that's happening today is the power of the individual, the power of the individual consumer. I call this the power of one. In 2008, a rock musician called Dave Carroll was flying to Chicago by United Airlines. He wanted to take his guitar on board. The airline said no. So he had to check in his guitar. They broke the guitar. So for two months, he tried to get them to compensate the guitar. And the United said, nah, it's in the exclusions. Read the fine print, buddy. So finally, he got fed up, and he composed a song called United Breaks Guitars. Put it up on YouTube. 12 million hits. What do you think happened to United's brand reputation? One guy. I think they offered him a guitar shop. Whilst all he wanted was one guitar. All right. Let's dig a little deeper. How is it happening? Why is it happening? So, you have a situation where Internet users have grown 28 times in 22 years. Globally, it's 43.4%. Unfortunately, in India, it's 18% of the population. So we have a long way to go. Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, devices. The issue is, today, a device is no longer a piece of hardware that performs certain functions. Today, a device is what I call encapsulated experience. It is part of your life. Sit at an airport lounge and watch people staring intently at their smartphones as if some fortune-telling device or is the snake and the mongoose, complete frozen hypnosis. Go to a restaurant 
look at a young couple deeply in love with their smartphones, not with each other. They've got the smartphone in front of each other's face. God knows what they're doing, but I have no idea. My eye surgeon, whose wife and he have the same practice in Delhi, they drive to work each day and they're texting each other as they're driving, sitting next to each other. So that's the impact, right? Whether that's good or bad, I have no idea, but that's what it is, right? Okay. When we look at devices, let's look at the exponential acceleration. When the iPod came out, it took Apple two years to sell one million. When the iPad came out, it took Apple two years to sell 80 million. So when you look at, and all of these are connected devices, whether it's Apple, the iOS ecosystem, the idea is not to sell you a device. The idea is to own you. The idea is to be the focal point of your life. The idea is to enable you to do whatever you want, wherever you want. And that is both an exciting and a frightening thing. The other part of why it's happening, this is a Radio Shack sales flyer from 1991. All right? If you take the total value of the various items here, uh, it includes um, camera, uh, video camera, uh, answering machine, uh, electronic calendar, uh, personal organizer, um, clock, radio, all that. Um, by today's uh, value, it's about $5,300. So multiply by 1.6 times 65 is about 5.5 lakh rupees. What's the relevance? The relevance is very simple. For 25,000 rupees, you get that same thing in your pocket today. Oh, you also get a mailman and a banker. Why wouldn't you, if this is what is happening, why wouldn't it draw you in? And it does. Okay, so. Um, the humble glass, right? There it is. It's been in our lives far longer than a smartphone, far longer than a tablet, far longer than a PC, right? What's that got to do with digital revolution? Tesla sedan, SX, SNX sedan. What's so great about it? Nothing much, apart from the fact that in October 2015, it automatically downloaded a software that made it self-driven car. Whilst all the owners were sleeping, and in the morning, it enabled the autopilot. All right. I'm going to skip some because we're running short of time. Let me just end with something which is closer to home. In October of this year, we at ACL law, uh, decided that over the next two years, we will do away with the annual performance appraisal. So we've launched a mobile-enabled weekly self-appraisal system called Pulse. Uh, 8,000 people fill it up 
every week. All their managers review every week. The managers' managers review this every week. And there's back-end analytics which tracks the performance. Um, that's all I have. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much, sir, for that very interesting session. May I request Mr. Didi Purkast, Managing Director and CEO, ABP Private Limited, and Chairman Infocom, to kindly come on to the dais and present a memento to our keynote speaker, Mr. Sumit Bhatcharya.